Hey everybody, my name is Joe Robinson and in this video we're going to talk about fingerstyle guitar playing and I'm going to go over what I consider to be the five pillars of fingerstyle mastery. Now no matter whether you're a beginner, intermediate or an advanced player, I think you'll find some important ideas covered in this video and I think this might help you focus your energies in your learning journey and basically the five pillars are such that the beginner players would focus on pillar one and two, the intermediate players would focus on pillar one, two, three, and four, and the advanced players are going to focus on all five pillars. Now, if you'd like to download a free PDF with details on each pillar and all the information, you can do so for free. It's linked below. Check it out. It's at my new website, which is called invisibletechnique.com because that's my goal is to give you invisible technique so that you have technical mastery of the guitar so that you can express your creativity and come up with all kinds of songs and arrangements that are unique to you. And to do that, I think you need to, to have your technique be invisible. Speaking of technique, pillar number one is technique. Now, here are some of the, the elements of technique that I think are really important that I think everybody needs to keep in mind when they're playing and practicing. We always want to be relaxed and loose when playing with no tension in the body. I always stretch before I play. I stretch my wrists, stretch my forearms. I even stretch my legs. I do like a whole body stretch before I practice and certainly before I walk on stage. I find that's just a an essential element of me being ready to play my songs, which are quite technically difficult. So we always want to be relaxed and loose with no tension. If we're playing a song or learning a song and we feel a little tension in the left hand, for example, which is common, that's when we need to stop and, and take a step back and really focus on what our muscles are doing and try to play what we're working on without tension. That is essentially the, the, the golden rule when learning an instrument. What we're trying to do is train our hands to have the fine motor control to play all kinds of songs, all kinds of ideas at different dynamic levels with, with perfect touch, tone, and, and taste. And the way to get a good tone from your instrument is to be really loose and relaxed. So... The goal of the left hand is to play with the minimum amount of pressure, fretting all notes cleanly with a good tone. I notice that a lot of people who are beginner or intermediate players will play with a lot of left hand pressure. Their left hand is, is too tight in my opinion. And I think that's one of the easiest ways to improve your technique right away is to just focus on playing with the minimum amount of pressure on the left hand. So you want the left hand to be really loose, really light, playing with just enough pressure to fret the notes cleanly. You want to fret with the very tip of the finger, and that is a, a, a principle of having good guitar technique. The right hand, when playing fingerstyle guitar, has two goals. Those goals are independence and dynamic control. Now, independence is having the thumb be able to play one thing and the fingers play something else, being able to play all kinds of different roles with the right hand. And dynamic control is being able to play loud or soft and everywhere in between. The left hand doesn't have a lot to do with dynamic control. You always want the left hand to be playing, like I said, with the minimum amount of pressure. But the right hand, you want it to be able to play loud, hitting the guitar pretty hard, or really delicately. And that dynamic control is a big, big element of creating a really connected, smooth sound when, when you're playing your arrangements. The most efficient way to build guitar independence is through learning specific training exercises and songs. I have a series called Complete Fingerstyle Guitar, Beginner, Intermediate, and Advanced that's available on my website, joerobinson.com slash courses. They're very affordable step-by-step -step courses that'll show you a bunch of specific training exercises to help develop your right hand technique. So I think 
learning specific training exercises and songs, and you don't have to learn mine. There are many great exercises out there, but it's a mistake to just go right into learning advanced songs because you, you're not going to really develop the independence properly. The, the key is to really start with these basic thumb patterns and finger rolls. It's very boring. It doesn't sound particularly exciting, but it's really important for developing the independence. So we're spending a lot of time on, this is just pillar one so far, but it's, it's very important. So I'm going to keep going. Now, dynamic control is achieved through practicing your songs loudly and quietly and everywhere in between. So when you're working on a new song or an arrangement, playing it really loudly but trying to stay relaxed is a great exercise because you'll need to hit each note cleanly, otherwise it's going to sound real, real messy. And then playing it as softly as you can is a great exercise as well because you'll train the, the, the left hand and right hand to be independent of one another where the, the right hand is playing really delicately softly and the left hand is playing with the minimum amount of pressure needed to fret the notes, no more, no less. And that's a great way to train the hands to have just that perfect touch. Guitar playing should never hurt with the exception of the fingertips getting a bit sore sometimes. It's perfectly normal for the fingertips to get a little tender when you're playing. Many people will say, yeah, I know that feeling of, of having, having calluses and having uh, kind of marks on the end of my fingers from playing a steel string guitar especially, but guitar playing should never hurt. It should never hurt in the wrist or the forearm or the shoulders or anything like that. Like I said, it's important to stretch before you play. I'm a big believer in that. And it should always feel good to, to, to play the instrument with the exception of those fingertips hurting sometimes. If your guitar is difficult to play, meaning if the action is too high and the setup is not good, you will struggle to build good technique. Have your instrument set up by a skilled luthier that you can develop a rapport with. Tell them you don't play strumming guitar, you play fingerstyle guitar, and you need the action to be low and ultra playable. This is a really important point. A lot of people will go to a guitar luthier and they'll have, have the luthier set up a guitar, and there's many different ways we can play an acoustic guitar. If you're strumming a guitar, you kind of want a lot of volume, and you want it to be the action to be quite a bit higher than, than you would want it if you were going to play delicate fingerstyle pieces. Delicate fingerstyle pieces are quite a bit more demanding on the left hand typically, and so you want the action to be really ultra playable. And if, if you play the guitars of, of any great fingerstyle guitar players out there, famous people, you know, I've had a chance to pick up their guitar and play it, and they usually have pretty low action. Whereas a lot of people who play strumming guitar, like bluegrass guitar players, for example, or flat picking guitars, kind of the same thing, a lot of them have real heavy strings and a higher action. I have quite heavy strings, but I have a very low action and I have big frets, and that works for me. But I highly recommend developing a rapport with a skilled luthier because I would not dare set up my guitar. I wouldn't cut the nut, I wouldn't cut the bridge, I wouldn't uh, fret dress the frets. I do adjust my neck, the truss rod, very slightly if I need it, mainly at season change if it goes to summer or winter, but anyway, the, the main principle here, the main takeaway is have your guitar set up well by a skilled luthier. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments, by the way. Here's a really important point. Once you build your technique, you really only need to maintain it, which takes much less time. Now, I've been playing for 20 years, pretty seriously, um, just on a constant learning journey. And when I was younger, I always had that frustration of, of wanting to play things that were beyond my technical ability. For the last 10 years or so, I haven't had that issue. I have good technique, and I can play pretty much anything I want. It becomes more about creativity and what I do play and what I choose to play and the songs I've come up with. Uh, but it does take a bit of maintenance to keep your technique in good shape. For example, I've just been driving around for, <laughs> for weeks on end, and I don't get as much time to, to play. So if I've been driving for two days and then I'm about to walk on stage and I haven't really had a chance to play, I'll, I'll warm up and I'll do a lot of my technical exercises just to get the hands kind of 
warmed up and back in shape. But it takes much less time to maintain your technique than it does to develop it. Developing your technique takes a lot of deliberate practice over a consistent amount of time. Repetition is the mother of skill. Playing the same boring ideas over and over again and the same songs over and over again with beautiful relaxed technique is really the way to train your hands to remember how to play what you're trying to teach your hands to play. Pillar number two is repertoire. You're only as good as the songs you play and a big secret to learning fingerstyle guitar is to just learn great songs. If you learn mediocre songs or songs that aren't composed very well, you're going to have a frustrating time. And a lot of popular guitar songs are kind of riff-based, and they're just not very well arranged. And I'm talking about very famous songs by a lot of, especially rock guitarists, who kind of, it's more just more of a jamming thing. And if you're trying to learn someone's jam, then it's like trying to, it's like trying to learn a speech from someone who's just making it up as they go rather than <laughs> learning a poem by someone who's really beautifully constructed some prose. <laughs> I hope that made sense. But learning really great quality songs, uh, arrangements by Chet Atkins, Mel Travis, Jerry Reed, Tommy Emanuel, a lot of my arrangements I've put a lot of thought and attention to detail into and so they can really help you develop your technique. And of course you want to start with easier songs and work your way up to learning more advanced songs. But I keep a repertoire spreadsheet on my computer and I have lists of all the different songs that I know how to play. Instrumental songs, vocal songs, jazz songs, fingerstyle songs. You know, I have all these different categories and it's great to, to work on your repertoire. A good rule of thumb is if you don't know what to practice, which I find a lot of people come to me saying, Joe, I don't know what to practice. Learning songs is pretty much the, <laughs> the, the place you want to focus. So like I said, a beginner guitarist, you want to focus on pillar one and two. So you want to focus on your technique and your repertoire. Those are the main things. Do good technical exercises and work on learning a lot of songs. You'll notice that I haven't mentioned music theory I haven't mentioned reading music or getting fluent with tab or anything like that. I do think it's important to learn the notes on the fingerboard and it's important to have a basic understanding of music theory, but that'll come. I think learning a lot of great songs and falling in love with music itself, the way it sounds and the way it feels to play it, is... I think it's important to get to that place before you start getting into music theory. I find it to be a bit sad when I meet teachers who who teach a kid how to read the stave before they teach a kid how to, how to actually play anything. And um, that's just not the, the way I, I feel it should be done. So, okay, moving on. Pillar number three is experience. So this is for more intermediate guitar. So after you've been playing for a while and you have a reasonable repertoire, it's good to get some experience playing for people. Now this can be on stage, this can be in front of a camera, you can be in your own studio uh, filming yourself on your phone with a good camera, with a studio microphone, however you do it, it's all valid. Um, you want to just work on playing your songs and listening back to the way you sound and getting feedback from the audience, trying to figure out what people connect with. You just learn so much about yourself, about the way you play, about what makes you comfortable, what makes you uncomfortable, that experience is really invaluable and we all need to develop that somehow. I meet a lot of people who spend a lot of time in the practice room but don't really get out and play the songs for people and you can, you can play on the street. In fact, playing on the street corner in a safe area, of course, is one of the best ways to just get, it, get the practice experience numbers, the hours racked up, I mean mean to say. I, I used to enjoy playing on the street, busking, we call it in Australia. And uh, these days when there's not many concerts happening and everyone's in lockdown, you can still get a lot of experience just by recording your songs, putting them online, doing live streams, all that kind of jazz. And if you're interested in, in learning how to record yourself, I have a recording course that's available at invisibletechnique.com. It's also linked in the video description, so do check that out. 
Um, there's a lot of information here. I don't want this video to be too long, but the basic idea is uh, learning to perform and getting comfortable with, with performing is going to really improve your music, your musicianship. When you walk out onto a stage, you learn right away how well you know a song. Whereas if you've never performed a song, you really don't know how well you know it <laughs> because you haven't put it through that test. Pillar number four, and I still consider this to be within the intermediate category of guitarists, which is creativity. Now this is applying your own musical ideas and your own musical taste to what you're doing. So it's coming up with your own arrangements. It's coming up with your own songs. I encourage everybody to try and write their own songs. It takes a while to get good at songwriting. And when I say good, I mean to get it to a point where you can come up with ideas that you like and you can string them together to create a song that, that makes sense. It just takes some, some practice and some uh, trial and error to figure out how to do that. And you've got to kind of just dive into it. But creativity is a really important element of of music, I feel. It's putting your own stamp on these ideas that we learn. And the reason we play is because we love music. So I think it's great to ask yourself, what do you love about music? Why do you love it? What really makes you excited about music? What makes you excited to learn a particular song? And you take those ideas, take what makes you excited about a song, and then you put it into your own songs. And it's great to steal ideas from other people's songs. You can steal a chord progression. You can steal uh, a kind of melody idea. You can steal a, a groove. You can't steal too much of a melody, of course. And you really don't want to plagiarize someone's song. But everyone is inspired by every everyone else. We all have heroes and we all have influences. And it's okay to emulate people. Uh, but I think it's great to... to pay attention to your own creativity. So the fifth pillar is kind of going beyond creativity uh, to a place that I call legacy. So it's basically what kind of musical legacy do you want to leave? What do you want to be known for? What do you want to contribute to the world of music? Because music is about giving. It's not about taking. It's about giving something to people, to the culture of music. Culture is cumulative and there's been a lot of incredible music created. You might think to yourself, how on earth could I possibly contribute something unique to this vast body of music that goes back hundreds and hundreds of years? I think there are so many things that have yet to be said with these 12 notes. And whenever I hear a music artist that has a unique sound, a unique touch, a, just a level of quality in the way they play, in their dynamics, in their touch for, for, because that's such a great word. Music is so much about touch and, and nuance. Whenever you hear somebody with just a special spirit in their music, I, I just really find that to be magnetic, and I think a lot of people do as well. So music is made to be shared. It brings joy to people. I encourage everyone to share and record your music, even if you you maybe think that no one wants to hear it. You'd be surprised if you put songs out on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and everywhere else these days. It's free to do so. It's a great exercise for yourself. It's a great exercise. It's a great exercise for the sake of just sharing music with people. And even if you're not an advanced player, you're an intermediate or a beginner player, some people love listening to beginner guitar players. Honestly, there's a lot of famous musicians who I consider to be beginner guitar players. There are a lot of famous guitar players who I consider to be intermediate guitar players. I consider um, the advanced level of players to be players like Paco de Lucia and Tommy Emmanuel and the great virtuosos that are the best of the best. The vast majority of guitar players that people know are in the intermediate category, if, if you ask me the way, the way I see it and there's nothing wrong with that it's not like advanced players are better it's just a different level of it's just a different level of technique that's all it's not a different level of creativity necessarily it's not a different level of of artistry it's just technically more a advanced and uh, I will say that fingerstyle guitar can be approached in many different ways there's a lot of players from the Michael Hedges open tuning school of guitar playing Someone said, 
yeah, I like the way those guys play the guitar like a bongo. <laughs> That really made me laugh. I, I don't really play that way, although I can certainly appreciate it, and I love listening to, to players like Michael Hedges, and Kent Nishimura is one of my favorite uh, new players in that in that scene. Um, there's lots of jazz fingerstyle guitarists like Joe Pass. I consider him to be a fingerstyle master. There's, of course, players like Tommy Emmanuel and Chet Atkins who have really influenced me, Primarily because they play melodic music, and I love melodic music. That's really what made me fall in love. Fall in love with music is a great melody, a great song, played by someone who is experiencing a sense of joy. That's really what I love, and that's the legacy I want to leave with my music. And I'm working on that every day. So just to recap, the five pillars are technique, repertoire experience, creativity, and legacy. So beginner guitar players, you work on your technique. Go to my website, joerobinson.com slash courses. You'll find courses there that will help you with your technique. Uh, you also work on your repertoire. I recommend you join my guitar synergy channel if you want to learn a bunch of really great songs. And I also share a lot of tutorials here on YouTube of how to play good songs. And there are many, many great songs out there. So that's what beginners should focus on, technique and repertoire. If you're an intermediate level guitar player, focus on your technique, your repertoire, but also getting some experience and work on your creativity, creating your own songs and your own arrangements, getting out there and performing them for people, recording your songs, check out my recording course, and, and really just learning about your learning about yourself, learning about your music and developing that style and that sound. And then step five is really about your legacy and what you want to say with your music, the, the story you want to tell, the reputation you want, to, you want to have. And I consider that advanced players need to focus on technique, need to focus on repertoire, need to focus on getting experience, continually working on uh, tunes. Apparently Chet Atkins used to have a job where he would work at a radio station and he'd wake up real early in the morning and he'd listen to the new hit songs of that day. And he would come up with his guitar arrangements of those songs. And he would do that day after day after day after day. So he got so good at creating new songs and and uh, arranging them very quickly. It's quite similar to, to the, the game of YouTube these days. You know, I'm posting two videos a week. My goal is to come up with 52 arrangements this year. We'll see how I go. Um... So technique, repertoire, experience, creativity, and legacy. Those are what I consider to be the five pillars of fingerstyle mastery. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this video and if you have anything to add. And do check out my free PDF download with a lot of information on this very topic, the five pillars of fingerstyle mastery. There's a PDF to download that has a lot of information that I think is going to help you. So thanks very much for watching this video. Wishing you all the best with your playing. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Cheers.